Hey guys, if you've just installed FL Studio and don't know what to do, then this video is for you. I'll be covering the interface and how you can get started making your own music. First, we'll start with the browser. You can find your projects, sample packs, and plugins here. Over here is your channel rack or your step sequencer. This is where you can left click and press space bar. To start making your patterns over here we have our playlist this is where you'll be putting your song together as a whole as you can see there's a paintbrush tool selected already if you click and drag you can paint your pattern into the playlist you left click and drag to paint it and while everything's highlighted red you can click one of them and drag to move the whole thing Control z to undo Control left click and drag to highlight and then you can left click and drag right click and drag to delete same for the channel rack or step sequencer, you can right click and drag to delete. Here we have our mixer. This is where you'll be adding effects to your sounds, adjusting the volume, the panning. If you don't know, that means moving the sound left or right. All that happens in here. I'm going to hold control and press Z repeatedly to bring our pattern back. Now when I press play, you should see the sounds running through the mixer. If you look in our channel rack, you can see how the kick has a one beside it, the clap has a two, and the hat has a three. If I mute these, you can left click the dot to mute specific instruments. Notice how none of the mixer inserts are labeled. If you want, you can click a mixer channel and press F2 on the keyboard to rename it, or you can right click, click rename, where you can right click and press R on the keyboard. All of them do the same thing. And then type it in and press enter to rename your channels. It helps to stay organized when you start adding a lot more stuff to the project. Now we wanna to go to our playlist by clicking it, clicking pattern one, left clicking and dragging. Now notice how the kick, clap, and hat are all on one pattern. What if we want to change one of the instruments without changing the other? Because this is pattern one, this is pattern one, and they're all pattern one. Whatever I do to pattern one, it'll do it to all of them. Let me adjust this so you can see it. Look in the playlist as I adjust the channel rack. Notice how all the pattern ones changed. We wouldn't want that. So what we can do, I'm gonna delete these real quick by right clicking and dragging. What we can do is click right here where it says pattern one, right click and then split by channel. What this does is separates all of our instruments and labels them as we have them labeled over here. So I'm clicking, deleting, clicking and dragging as we did earlier. Notice how our pattern switches to whatever instrument we click on. Now, let's say you wanna change one of the patterns to spice up your song. What you can do is left click the icon at the top left, and click make unique. See how there's a two beside it? I'm gonna put this here too. Now I can change this pattern. I'm going to play it from the beginning, which you can do by going in the playlists and clicking on the timeline. Or you can press Shift L on the keyboard to switch between the pattern and the song. If you've just opened FL Studio, you should have these default sounds. But under packs, don't mind these, I have a lot of sample packs. You guys should have this to start with. The drums, drums mode audio, flex instruments, all that. Go to drums mode audio, and you can scroll through the samples to see whatever you like. For example, I'm going to select this one. You can click, left click and drag, and drop over a sample. To replace it, make sure there's a green box around the sample you want to replace, and then let go of the mouse. Now I'm going to the claps. 
Same thing for the clap. Also in our packs, we have instruments. For example, we could go to keyboard, stage grand, left click and drag into our channel rack. And when we press the keys on our keyboard, you should hear the notes play. Now your QWERTY keyboard, the KWERTY keyboard, works as a piano. With Q being C, 2 being C sharp, W being D, and so on. Z also being C, but I believe it's an octave lower. So over here where we see hat two, click and hold, drag up to open a new pattern. And then you can right click, stage grand, and go to piano roll. This is another very important section because we've covered the browser, the channel rack, the mixer, and the playlist. Now the piano roll is where you're gonna be making all your melodies. So we're gonna start with something simple. If you aren't familiar with C major, it's all the white keys on the keyboard. And a chord is basically comprised of every other note. So if I press Q, on the keyboard for C5. Then every other note would be skipping a note, E, skipping a note, G. You can click in the piano roll and drag your note. If you click on the end, you can change how long the note is. I'm gonna switch the pattern. Now I'm gonna control left click and drag over these notes. While still holding control, I'm going to press C. Then I'm going to press B. Control V also pastes, but Control B pastes at the end of the previous notes. Here's a quick music theory trick. This is a C major chord. A major chord has a gap of three notes between the first and second note, then a gap of two notes between the second and third note. So to make a major chord a minor chord, you just take the middle note and move it down a note. Also, every chord follows a pattern. This is called a C major because it starts at C and follows the major formula. So if I take this down to A, this is now an A major. B major. C major. Now I'm using shift up and shift down to move it. So if you remember this, this will help you get very far in terms of making your own chord progressions and melodies. So I'm gonna take this, move it down to A minor. So while this is highlighted, control C, control B. And I'm going to move it down to G and make it a major. Then I'm going to control left click and drag to highlight this, and then make it twice as long. And then I'm going to click on in the playlist to put our pattern there. So now when I play the song by clicking song at the top or pressing shift L on the keyboard, another important section of FL Studio is the toolbar, which I wanted to cover last. This is where you can save and load your projects, add plugins as well, change the speed of the song. So if I right click this from 130, bring it to 100. You can also left click and drag up and down to pick your speed. I'm gonna put it back at 130. The icons at the top are how you can open and close your windows. So we have the playlist, piano roll, step sequencer, your or channel rack, the mixer, in your browser. So if anything's ever missing, you may be accidentally clicked out of it and can't find it, check your toolbar at the top. You can also save your project with Control S, or you can click here, or File, Save, all that good stuff. But the main reason I brought this up is I want you to go to Add. Over here is where you have your generator plugins. There's two types of plugins. There's effect plugins, which affect already existing sounds, and generator plugins, which generate sounds or create sounds. But we're gonna go with Flex. Here we have Flex and it has presets. So you can click through them, see what you like. And 
I believe there are free packs to have more variety of sounds to choose from. So let's go with dark chocolate. If I right click dark chocolate and go to piano roll, there's this icon at the top called ghost notes. Turn this on or turn it off. This is useful because you can see what is also being played in the other instruments in the same pattern. We can see what notes we're using and make our pattern melody based off this. So I'm gonna control left click and drag, control C, control V. Then same thing. And then I'm gonna press control down to drop it in, oh wait. So then I'm gonna click to make sure this isn't highlighted, delete that. I just wanted to deselect that real quick. And then press control down to drop it in octave. Now, if you don't know what an octave is, just notice how the keyboard goes from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then it starts over, then it starts over. So an octave is every time it starts over, but it's going to be a octave or 12 notes higher or lower. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 semitones lower. So in the channel rack, I'm gonna click the box to make sure dark chocolate is selected. Press Control X to cut. Still holding Control, press F4 to open a new pattern. Control V to paste. And that's also how you can put instruments in their own pattern. So in the playlist, I can mute the piano and see how everything sounds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Control left click and drag to highlight everything we have so far. I'm gonna press Control C. I'm Press Control B and press B two more times. So now we can start carving out our song. So say we wanted to start with no drums and just the piano. We right click, delete all this. Maybe the bass line too. Now we have a start. Also, while I'm thinking about it, the stage grand, which is our piano and the dark chocolate bass. If I select one of the boxes and right click another box, they're both selected. Now watch this. We can open our mixer, pick an insert that's not currently being used and press control shift L. This will link both in order. See how it copied the color and the name. This is really helpful when adding things to the mixer. When we added the kick, clap and the hat to the mixer earlier, it was already linked. So it only added the name, not the sound. But if an insert is completely empty, when you add something to it, it copies the color, the name, and it links the sound to the mixer. So that way you don't have to rename everything unless you want to. Say we think the bass is too loud. Over here, we can adjust the volume. So I'm gonna click in the playlist to fast forward to where the bass comes in. And let's say we think the bass has too much high frequency content. What we can do is filter out the high end. So with dark chocolate selected, we can go to the effects section. Pick an effect slot and add fruity parametric EQ2. Now to make a low pass, you want to click this icon at the top, top right in the blue section. Click and drag it until you see this shape. This is a low pass. Click the dot beneath it and drag to tighten the curve. Now that pretty much covers everything you need to get started. So I hope this was able to help you. Have fun, happy creating.